What a special night in Colonial Life Arena. Not only is it the season opener for South Carolina, but the Gamecocks, the number one team in the nation, will drop that national championship banner and they will receive their national championship rings. And we have it for you here. Man, it is good to be back. Courtney Lyle alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. What a special time this is for a special team. What was it like watching South Carolina go wire to wire number one and win it all last year? Well, we got we had a front row seat. We got to sit right here. We got to see a team really evolve and build into a championship mode. Could we possibly see a repeat? Ooh, well, there's a lot of key pieces back. South Carolina is going to return four starters. Aaliyah Boston obviously is one of those two, the national player of the year. But you look at what the South Carolina team was able to do last season. They did it with dominance, especially when it came to rebounding and controlling the paint. Well, defense. Yeah. And with the link that South Carolina had, and you, you know, you've got Aaliyah Boston, but you had Victoria Saxon. You had Leticia and me here come in off the bench. Camilla Cardoso. Like, it was just size after size after size for the Gamecocks. Yeah, and Victoria Saxton, that's kind of a surprise this year. She decided to come back for a fifth season. So another key piece for the Gamecocks. Now, Carolyn, they're going to reveal a couple of banners today. The first is going to be honoring attendance. South Carolina has led the nation in average attendance the last eight seasons. There's something different about the environment inside Colonial Life Arena. Well, and I think that Don Staley has everything to do with the evolution and the growth of the popularity of women's basketball here in South Carolina. She's connected to the community, and that community has come inside to Colonial Life. You know, she was asked about, what do you remember your first time coaching in Colonial Life Arena? And she said, well, I could hear myself yelling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> been impressive what she has been able to do to grow this fan base they call them the fams for a reason because they consider them family well and over the last six seasons they've had at least one sellout last year in february remember that tennessee game 18,000 people crowded this building yeah college game day was here so it's been impressive they'll honor the fans now up on the Jumbotron here in Colonial Life Arena. They've made sure to get here early to see this moment because winning a national title, it doesn't happen very often, is so hard to do. You know that, you've done it. Well, and but Dawn Staley, when she first came to Columbia, South Carolina, she said, I know what success looks like. I know what it sounds like. I know what it feels like. And she brought that mentality. She was relentless, didn't give up on it until she has built the program that we see now year in and year out here in South Carolina. So what is it about these programs, specifically last year, what was their DNA? Because that's a theme this year for South Carolina. They're using DNA. Well, I think the biggest thing is if there's no quick fix, you have to build it slowly, strong foundation. And she did it starting with players from the state of South Carolina. Championship and their national championship. To present Director of Athletics, Ray Tanner, and Senior Administrator Charles Waddell, along with rings with head coach Dawn Staley. Now recognizing the team support staff, sports performance coach Molly Benetti. Athletic trainer, Craig Oates. Video coordinator, Hudson Jacobs. Special assistant to head coach, Diane Palmer. Director of operations, Ariana Moore. Director of Player Development, Freddie Reddy. And now our coaching staff, Assistant Coach, Jolene Law. Assistant Coach, Fred Shamil. Associate Head Coach, Lisa Boyer.
And finally, the 2022 national champions, number 20, Sanaya Fagan. Number 23, Bree Hall. Number 25, Raven Johnson. Number 10, Camilla Cardoso. Number zero, Olivia Thompson. Number one, Zaya Cook. <laughs> Number four, Aliyah Boston. Number 12, Bree Beal. Number 15, the teacher of me here. Number five, Victoria Sexton. <laughs> Number 24, Lily Grosset. Number three, Indiana Fever Point Guard, Destiny Kitty Henderson. <laughs> and your head coach, Don Staley. All right, team, open up your boxes and take a look. Open up your boxes, take a look. Let's hear it for your national champion, South Carolina Gamecocks. How special. It doesn't happen often. We know how much work it takes to become a national champion. And now Don Staley has this program two national titles. Fantastic way to kick off a season. A reminder of what you did last season. It's got to be motivation to repeat. When you look at the celebration here with these fans, you get to open 
that jewelry box with that beautiful piece of jewelry inside that ring. And look, that was no little bitty nugget. That's a big hunk of a ring. Check that out. Yeah, look at the rings for this year's national champions. You see net worth on the side. That was their slogan last year. Do you think it means even more, too, because of the tournament they didn't have in 2020? They were going into the tournament projected to be that number one seed with a lot of these players, and then everything was canceled. I, I, absolutely. I think the motivation, the dedication, because you remember – this senior class, when they came in as freshmen, they were playing on a mission, and that season got cut short. And they felt like they were denied, but that did not deter, deter them from the motivation and determination they had to get this moment right here, to be able to flash that jewelry, to get that national championship ring. Well, South Carolina put a ring on it. Guess what? We still have a basketball game to play. ETSU and South Carolina. It is coming up at the bottom of the hour, 8.30, over on SEC Network. Carolyn and I will be there for the call. We'll see you shortly. Banners drop, rings are handed out at Colonial Life. Let's go! We are back and could not be more thrilled. Courtney Lyle alongside National Championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. Last time we saw the South Carolina team, they were winning it all. They were finishing at number one, and guess what? They start the season at number one. Well, and how did they do it? They were so dominant defensively. They had great players both inside and out. I talked to Don Staley this morning at Shoot Around. She said, I think that this year's team has the potential to be better than last year's team. Wow, that's a statement. Hey, it helps too when you have the National Player of the Year in Aaliyah Boston returning. Aaliyah Boston is, as Don Staley says, already pro ready. Remember last season, she had 30 double doubles. She showed the variety of ways that she can make an impact on the floor, whether it be in the paint, on the defensive end, and oh yes, stretch the offense by knocking down the three point shot. She is the most dominant player in college basketball and she is ready to get even better with her game. How scary is that if you're not South Carolina? Even more scary, the fact that she has three other returning starters, including Victoria Saxton coming back. Victoria Saxton was one player that Don Staley was worried about having to replace this season because she is a tremendous shot blocker. She is relentless on the boards. And Victoria Saxon made the decision to come back for her fifth year, work on her game, get ready for that next level of the WNBA. So she's going to make a major impact this season. Feels like basketball season. Feels like South Carolina when Sam Storm is rocking. Fans got here early to make sure they saw the pregame ceremony dropping the banner and giving these players their national championship rings. Carolyn, what are you most excited to see tonight about South Carolina? Well, I'm watching that point guard spot. Now, remember, Destiny Henderson was the point guard for the South Carolina Gamecocks National Championship team. A player I've been excited to see is Raven Johnson. Remember, she tore her ACL last season in the starting lineup for the first time today. Number 25 in white for South Carolina, and she immediately gets the basketball. It's been a long road to get her back, but she was fired up before this game to take the floor. You see ETSU knows that they're outmatched with size. They're going to pack it inside for South Carolina to take those perimeter shots. How about that extra effort, though, from Sarah Thompson to get the rebound? She's number 23 in that Navy jersey for ETSU. East Tennessee State located in Johnson City, Tennessee. Giselle Thomas with the first shot. And on the glass, Courtney Moore able to benefit from a rebound. Here goes Raven Johnson trying to run this offense for South Carolina. She'll take the three off the front of the iron. And out of bounds off of ETSU. South Carolina starting five. You might know some of these names. As we said, the only change, Raven Johnson. And there's the shot from Zaya Cook. 
Zaya Cook, since she has attended South Carolina, she has started every game. This is the 101st game in the starting lineup for Cook. Here's ETSU's starting five, and there's going to be some new faces in the starting lineup for the Buccaneers. They have nine new players and a new head coach. A new head coach that didn't sign to come with ETSU until August. Courtney Moore, she can shoot the basketball, an all-conference third-team selection last season for ETSU. ETSU and shoot around today. Yes, they're coming into the arena of the number one ranked team in the country. They worked hard. They brought great energy. Look, they've got great confidence. So does Bree Beal. Look at that shot. Watch out now. Bree Beal, throughout her career, has been all about defense, right? She knocking down jumpers. Total package. Uh -oh. This is Jalea Rufus Milner, number 14, gives it up to Giselle Thomas. Thomas is going to be one of the top players for ETSU this season, transferred in from Temple, and this will stay with the Bucks. Yeah, Brenda Mock Brown, you mentioned it, Carolyn, taking this job named head coach on August 8th. So tomorrow is her three month anniversary of being their head coach. When you take over as a head coach, you usually think it's at a time where you can bring in your own players. No, Coach Mock, she inherited this whole team and her whole staff. She was only, she was the newest piece added to this program. Raven Johnson will take the basketball for South Carolina and set things back up, directing traffic. The three, and it's off. Well, you said it, Carolyn. Dawn Staley has said this team has the potential to be even better than last year. Why is that? What do you see? Well, in adding the bringing back the experience that she has, and she's looked at some key areas she wanted to see improvement in. One was moving the basketball, increase the assist. She also wants to shoot the ball better from the three and a better overall field goal percentage. Giselle Thomas creating, working down low against Bree Beal. Let me tell you, ETSU, they're picked sixth in the SOCON. They're going to surprise some people this year. South Carolina's taking a lot of outside shots early in this one, and that goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the Gamecocks. Giselle Thomas had 29 points in their last exhibition game. This is a player that really She's slippery. She can find a way, get inside the defense and finish inside and watch her and shoot around. Coach Mock said three-point shooting is not really her strength. She was lighting it up this morning. Yeah, maybe becoming her strength. Maybe that's something she's working on. We do know. We talked to her. She was thrilled to be at ETSU. Felt like it was a really good fit for her. Zaya Cook on the baseline. Look, Giselle Thomas, she's played at FIU. She also then transferred to Temple. So she's had three different head coaches. And she, well, she said, started at high point. Well, right, so four. And she says Brenda Mock is her favorite of all the coaches that she has played for. It's been the best fit for her. Thomas into some traffic in the trees against South Carolina. Bree Beal looking to go coast to coast. It'll be a blocking foul on Sarah Thompson. South Carolina has brought in Kiera Fletcher, the transfer from Georgia Tech. Now she's been limited in the preseason camp, working back from that injury she suffered last season. But they feel like they're going to use her and also Raven Johnson at the point. What Don had really anticipated was having Raven Johnson have the ability to play behind Destiny Henderson last year. And when she tore her ACL, kind of set her back. But the thing that Dawn said she loves about Raven Johnson is she plays hard, she plays fast. And when you have a point guard that pushes in, in transition and she's fearless, it's easier to pull him back than to push him out there. Yeah, it's been almost a year since Raven Johnson tore her ACL. That was November 12th against South Dakota last season. Came in as the number one point guard. She was the number two overall player, the Naismith High School Player of the Year. Aaliyah Boston, the National Player of the Year. I like that quick move. She sized it up and then made a quick decision to attack the basket. 
Can you believe she's a senior? No. I really can't. And, you know, she has that COVID year. She could come back. But Don Staley said she has come to terms of she's ready. She's pro ready. She's got all the tools. She's ready to play in this summer ball of, w, of the WNBA. She has the total package. I said, well, what if Aaliyah says she wants to come back? And Don was quick to say, oh, I'll take her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's not going to say no. Look at the accolades of Aaliyah Boston. We couldn't fit them all on a graphic, so <laughs> it's been impressive what she has done coming into the South Carolina program. I wonder if Don say reserved extra room for another statue. You know, she has Asia Wilson already outside. Ooh. And Sonia Fagan is going to be called on that foul for South Carolina. Look, we're seeing, we weren't really sure what kind of ETSU team we were going to get because there's so many new pieces and we haven't seen them play yet. But we've already seen they're going to be a scrappy, tough team. Well, they bring great energy. And Coach Mock coaches with such joy, and the players play that way. They were excited coming in to shoot around. She said they bring that energy every day. And we talked to Jackie Alexander, Coach Mock's assistant, who said that energy was brought from Brenda Mock, Coach Mock brought energy and excitement. Wow, that was Brie Beal on defense and then feeding it down the floor to Fagan. Look at the activity of the post rotating defensively. Corner is open, Journey McDaniel can't knock it down and out comes Fletcher. Cook waiting in the corner. Fletcher's going to take the paint high up off the window. Just the experience at that point guard spot. You talked about what she did at Georgia Tech. Just the confidence now to step into a program where a team has just won a national championship. Seven straight points. Gamecocks trying to add to it. Zaya Cook up ahead misses. Fletcher got it back, and she's fouled. This is what champions are built on. It's the defense that creates offense. Off and running, the game pops. Look, the horses are out of the barn. The challenges of repeating as national champions comes with so many, so many challenges. One is you got to get up every day and prepare like you've never won a national championship. And that's the hardest thing to do once you've won. And South Carolina is trying to do just that. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck with you. And what's something that Don Staley has said numerous times is that every player on this team went through the summer and got better. Well, when she sees that kind of hunger, that helps her to answer the question about coming hungry you got to get up and accept that challenge that you're going after another national championship you know when it's something that you've never had before you have that hunger but now that you it's it's easy for some to be complacent and Don Staley said she doesn't see that from this team the hunger and desire to repeat it's there for the Gamecocks. And maybe they feel it a little more tonight because pregame before this game got underway, they dropped that national championship banner, the second in South Carolina women's basketball history. They handed out those national championship rings. What a way to start the season. What an, an, an exciting time. This is the first time the players have seen it. I asked Dawn if she had seen it, what they looked like. She said, actually, we haven't seen it. They had they kept that a secret all day long. And you saw in the box not only the national championship ring, but the SEC tournament champ or the SEC regular season championship ring they got as well. South Carolina on a 7-0 run against ETSU. Sanaya Fagan, the putback. Number 20, somebody to watch this season. Oh, Pat? absolutely. Sanaya Fagan, she Don Staley said she's the best play, post player that she has. And I looked at her and I was like, well, you have Aaliyah Boston. Yeah. 
she said. If you don't know. Right? <laughs> I'm like, okay, wait a minute. But, no, she said just the natural, raw ability. Sanaya Fagan has it. That's number 20 in white, Sanaya Fagan for South Carolina. You know, right. Fagan started coming along last season of late, getting more time, more minutes, more experience. Fletcher for three. South Carolina one for six from behind the arc to start this game. Still on a 9-0 run. Yeah, Destiny Henderson was one last season that could answer that question of knocking down the three-point shot. The question this season is who is going to be that consistent three-point shooter for South Carolina? Journey McDaniel on the miss for ETSU. This is Talasia Cooper, one of the two freshmen that South Carolina added. Back the other way, Giselle Thomas misses a layup. Cooper looking inside to Fagan. She's got her, kicks it right back out. Another three taken, and this one will drop in for Talasia Cooper, who was the number 18 overall recruit in this year's class. Well, I believe that ETSU and Coach Mock, look, in watching South Carolina, you're not going to be able to outsize, outmatch the Gamecocks inside, so you got to force the perimeter shot. But I think that this is an area, once the Gamecocks start seeing that ball go through the hoop, a few more, the confidence is going to build. Bree Beal steps into it. On the boards, Camila Cardoso up and in. And ETSU is going to call timeout. South Carolina on a 14-0 run. Well, South Carolina is a very willing team to move, share the basketball. And listen, if I'm a perimeter player, I'm pulling the trigger. I'm going to shoot the basketball because I know I got size inside that's going to be able to get those offensive rebounds. Well, this is just opening day. I want to remind you, our Sunday afternoon women's basketball doubleheader, Florida hosts UNC Asheville at 2 Eastern. And then number 16, LSU, welcoming in Western Carolina at the PMAC in Baton Rouge, 4 Eastern, 3 Central, both games here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Look, LSU is going to be interesting. Year two under Kim Mulkey and the pieces that she's added, that's exciting too. Well, Kim Mulkey is a coach that likes to have a strong inside presence, and she got exactly that with Angel Reese transferring in from Maryland. She also has Ladeja Williams, who had started here at South Carolina before transferring to Missouri. Now she's at LSU, and you couple that with guard play of Alexis Morris, and they got a freshman, Flojay Johnson. She is a special guard to watch. And a rapper. Oh, yes, yeah, she's talented. Yeah. <laughs> Wrapped at their Go Madness event. And there's a traveling violation on ETSU. South Carolina you. on a 14-0 run. Look at you getting in on the rap music. You know, I do Flo some Ray. really good research, and this was fun this week, <laughs> looking at all the SEC teams. Well, check out what's on your Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Elton John. Raven Johnson back in the game to run point. We've seen both her and Kiera Fletcher take over the ball handling duties. Obviously, Destiny Henderson on to the WNBA. Sanaya Fagan was pointing, saying, I wanted it higher. Don Staley said, no, when the ball comes to you, big girl, you go get it wherever it is. ETSU working this motion. Thomas with a lane for a second to the basket, and Camila Cardoso comes over. She'll be whistled on the foul. You know, for the Buccaneers to be able to be on the same page, connected in this motion spread offense, I like their spacing, I like their timing. They are getting opportunities. And again, this is a system that wasn't put in until August. And we've mentioned all the players that are coming back that are familiar with the system, but or with South Carolina's system on their side. Look at the new faces that South Carolina has added. So you've got all that experience, plus two really talented freshmen and then a grad transfer. I cannot wait to see Ashlyn Watkins. This is a player that in the Powerade dunk contest, she won it. She's only the third female to have done that. 
Candace Parker did it. Fran Belibi from Stanford did it. And now Ashton Watkins. Raven Johnson, get it. I thought it would be just a matter of time before Raven Johnson settled into the game. She is a point, she is a scoring point guard. Now she's a pass first, but look at that defense. She's got that defense, she's got the steal, lays it up and in, pretty. Carolyn, I remember you told me you were recruiting her. How cool was it to watch her in high school, Raven Johnson? Look, I knew we had no shot of signing Raven Johnson. I just <laughs> went to her high school just to watch her play. She was yeah. that entertaining. <laughs> Remember, Raven Johnson was the first female to play on the Iversons boys team in the summer. Johnson surveying the field, back to Zaya Cook. <laughs> Give it right back to your shooter. Raven Johnson knows it. But Raven just hit a shot, right? But unselfish, and she's like, let me get Zaya Cook turned up. So she makes that pass to number one, and Cook pays it off. Rufus Milner kicks it over to Vananda. Cook snuck up ahead, and she is fouled by Aaliyah Vananda. But you see that pass from Raven Johnson? She's at three-quarter court over in front of Dawn Staley with one hand off the bounce. Makes that pass down the court. It's the vision. And Aaliyah Boston was talking to about us about that pregame. She said she sees the floor so well. And as a post player, you love it. Yeah. Because <laughs> you got a point guard that's going to find you. If you run the floor, she's going to pay you up. So Don Staley makes some substitutions here. Zaya Cook at the free throw line. 12.8 seconds left here in the first quarter. It is a 22 to one run for the Gamecocks. called on Olivia Thompson. ETSU does not have their starting point guard tonight. Kendall Foley would be that starting point guard, setting things up for their offense. They're actually down four players. Pass goes inside. The turnaround by Ja'Kaya Davis. No, and it's heaved up in the air. Zaya Cook almost had it. A 24 to one run to end the quarter for South Carolina, and we've gotten to see their new point guard work. Well, it was all about getting things off and running. Number 25, Raven Johnson, a red shirt freshman. This is her first season with the Gamecocks. She's taking the reins, running that point guard spot, and I think she's handled it just well, so well so far. Well, we mentioned a new face leading this ETSU Buccaneers program. It is Brenda Mock Brown. She's been in the SEC before. She was a Florida assistant coach from 2006 to 2012 and then made her way over to UNC Asheville where she got them to the postseason four times. She was part of five of their total 10 winning seasons all time in program history. It was the 2016 Conference Coach of the Year. And now, after two seasons off, away from coaching, she has taken over this ETSU program. She said, I got a call on Thursday, did an interview on Thursday, accepted on Saturday, was announced August 8th. <laughs> she hit the <laughs> ground running. But if there's anybody that can take over a program in this situation, it is Brenda Mock. And listen, she also then decided to make the decision to play South Carolina. They needed a game, and so coming in and playing this game now in November, and she's no stranger to playing against South Carolina. In 2017, she was coaching at UNC Asheville as a 16 seed getting into the postseason tournament. Their first game was against South Carolina. So this will be the second meeting between these two. Um, our friend Steffi Sorensen, our colleague, she was coached by Coach Mock at Florida. At Florida, yeah. Yeah. Big so fan. Amanda Butler was the head coach yes. of Florida. I loved talking to Jackie Alexander 
her assistant coach who told us, you know, I had my first interview with her on the day of her press conference, and I knew right then I wanted to be a part of this. And the biggest thing that Jackie Alexander said is that Coach Mock sat down and she said, she came to where I was. She met me where I was. And, I mean, that's anybody that gets to know Mott knows. She's going she's gonna to get to know you, not talk down to you. doesn't matter. She's a head coach. She wants to know how she can help make your situation better. A little high-low action as Watkins sends it down to Cardoso. South Carolina ended the first quarter on a 24-to-1 run. This pass right here, that's Ashlyn Watkins that knows just where to put the basketball up high to Camilla Cardoso. That's a perfect touch from the freshman. How deep can South Carolina go? I say 12. Olivia Thompson, number zero that's on the floor right now. Don Staley said, oh, has, not, has given me a reason that I have got to put her on the floor. She's worked on that shot. She's a fan favorite, too. She says she's worked on her defense as well. Scoops up that ball, sends it ahead to Cook on the layup. Nine points for Zaya. Yeah, I was talking to Coach Jolette Law, and he said not only is our team better, but they're highlighters. That's what they call their practice squad. Said they're better this year, so practices are ultra competitive. Taken away, right mid air. And then jump ball, possession arrows pointing to ETSU. I want to see Zaya Cook have a breakout season this year. Number one in white. This is her senior season, and she has said she doesn't feel like she has played her best basketball as of yet, but it is all coming together in this senior season. She said she doesn't really feel the pressure. She wants to win, but she wants to be the best version of herself this season. So what is it when you watch her game, what is the next step for Zaya Cook? It's just a decision making. And she said one thing that she's learned from Don Staley is not to get too high on the high or too low with the lows and to be able to turn the page, move on to the next play. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Courtney Moore driving, trying to kick. It's hard to do against South Carolina's length. I think Ashlyn Watkins got a hand on that. Look, th that freshman, number two, Ashlyn Watkins, has great instincts. She's got good quickness. And wait till you see her get off the floor. This woman can leap. Giselle Thomas underneath. Cardoso just over everybody to take away the rebound. So both freshmen on the floor right now for South Carolina. Number 11, Cooper. Number 2, Watkins, who has the ball. Elbow shot. Pretty. Woo. I'm trying to tell y'all, these freshmen. Let them know. Hey. Number two and number 11, these are the two freshmen for South Carolina that come in with confidence, with game, with a presence. Courtney Bo Moore, again, another chance. The kickback to Journey McDaniel. And you see Cooper, one of those freshmen, already crashing the glass. Olivia Thompson put back by Watkins. I try to tell you, I'm going to tell you, this number two, this freshman, Ashlyn Watkins, she's special. Wow. I tried to give you the scouting report. I knew. You were going to be in for a treat watching that freshman play. In the exhibition game, she had 11 points, shot 50% from the field, nine rebounds and two steals. Four seconds on the shot clock. Check this out, Courtney. Look at where Ashlyn Watkins comes from. She's at the top of the key. The timing, knowing she didn't have to come down with the basketball with the little tap, the put back on the offensive glass. 
Look, Dawn has challenged her to be active on both ends of the floor. She's talked about it. She's like, I can't take any plays off. I want to be active defensively. I'm always watching where the ball's going, trying to anticipate what's coming next. You saw that on that play. Well, that's the thing. When you're going from high school to freshman is understanding the pace of which you have to play. There's no plays off. Everybody's coming at you, especially when you're on the team that just won the national championship. You can't take it easy. You can't get complacent. You've got to play with that hunger, that fire. Jayla Rufus Milner is at the free throw line right now for ETSU, the transfer from Pepperdine. She was fouled by Cardoso, her second. Taken away, Sarah Thompson. Look at the speed of Aaliyah Boston. Up ahead to Thomas, but a little too much power. Talasia Cooper. Coop, Coop. You're talking about the depth of South Carolina? Don Stately has gone, gone to her bench early, and the level of play seems to have gone up. 11 players have played, nine have scored for South Carolina. There's a bucket from Rufus Milner. It's the first field goal for ETSU in 11 minutes. Well, Mock talked about in this game, the battles, the victories they can get within this game. Dan, she has respect for how good South Carolina is, but she just wants to see her team bring the energy for 40 minutes to compete. They've done that. Yeah, the score is 40 to nine. But look, when you're playing against a big, long-sized talent of South Carolina, understanding in the SOCON, ETSU is going to be OK. Going to be playing against players that are about their size. They're connected offensively. I like their shot selection that they're, that they're taking. It's just tough to battle on the boards with South Carolina. You know, she gave us some things that she was going to look for in this game. Positive possessions. Do we get a good look? Look, they've been in the paint a lot. Absolutely. Also, spacing. Are we maintaining our offensive spacing? And she also said, are we in the correct coverage? Can we execute the correct coverage even if they get a score off? Did we execute it correctly? And I think that they have because the coverage has been defensively really wanting to try to make South Carolina either make the tough play with the long pass yeah. or the, the lob pass or for South Carolina to shoot the ball outside. I mean, that's about all you can do because you're not going to grow here tonight, yeah. not going to be any taller or longer. And with having such a young roster, when you have 12 of the 14 players on your team that are either freshmen or sophomores, I, I think that the system put in, the players are getting it, and things will start to come together as they get more experience together. And there's a positive play right there, Aliyah Venanda. Defensive deflection, then it ended up going out of bounds off of South Carolina. Forced them into the turnover. And then they give it right back to Fletcher. She's got some help from Cooper. Into the hands of Thompson. But you're watching this five out, four out spread offense for ETSU. They keep their distance, just the defense of South Carolina just so aggressive. And Cooper overthrows Boston. So we'll see Letitia and me here check into the game along with Victoria Saxton. First time that we're seeing a me here. Just got back with the team, was dealing with a death in the family, but she is back here with South Carolina. Yeah, she landed today uh, back in town about 11 o'clock. They'd shoot around and now back on the court. Aliyah Boston for three. Fletcher up to the glass. Everybody for South Carolina rebounds the basketball. Doesn't matter if you're a post, a wing, or a point guard. A fan, you don't have a choice. <laughs> if you're in here, you got to rebound. Yeah, they set all kind of program records last year in rebounding. And I asked Dawn, I said, yeah, rebounding, 
you're going to take it up to another level. Look, they had almost 2,000 rebounds last season. 635 of those were offensive rebounds. I said, is that something you take to another level? Dunn goes, no, I, I'm pretty good with where <laughs> yeah. we are, rebounding. Rebounding's not a concern of Don Staley's. Yeah, those are all program records. And, you know, she talked about field goal percentage. we got to get that up. It, it did help. They were so good on the glass. If they did miss a shot, there was somebody right there to put it back up and in. Well, and that gives shooters confidence to shoot the ball. But I think everybody for South Carolina has really worked on their shot. I think when they find their opportunities, those are going to fall. The field goal percentage for South Carolina, Don Staley kept saying 42%. 42%. It's what they shot last season. Johnson's three won't go. Foul called on the rebound. Check out this rebound. There's your freshman. And her name is S. Walk Button. like a post player that can shoot the three. Take a look at the numbers tonight. 21 bench points. Nine different players have scored for South Carolina. Five blocks. But we were looking at the turnover number two in the break. Just four turnovers for South Carolina. A lot of times in these pre-conference games, it can be a little sloppy. Not take care of the basketball so well. But I think South Carolina's looked pretty good. And especially with ETSU in, sitting in a zone really making South Carolina have to move the basketball. Sarah Thompson up against Aaliyah Boston. I'm watching South Carolina switch on some of these screens and how the post players step out and cover. Oh, in and out, Boston on the rebound, and she's fouled by Journey McDaniel. That's her second. A swarm of South Carolina players rotating, active, pursuit of the basketball, and then headed quickly the other direction. How beneficial do you think it is having Raven Johnson, but also Kiera Fletcher that can come in and run the point? And these are two true point guards. And what I mean is that they are their their mindset is distribute first. And not taking anything from Disney Henderson because she could score. I mean, why not? She, she did okay, Pat. She did good at the scoring position. But now when you have so many different options around you, and I'm not saying that Kiara Fletcher and Raven Johnson can't score. They can, but they also are willing passers. So Courtney Moore has taken a pause here for ETSU. We knew coming into the game she was limited. She's been banged up. Well, she didn't even play in the exhibition game. Yeah. ETSU already shorthanded tonight. Four players unavailable. They all will be back for the season. And Brenda Mock Brown hoping that some of these role players getting extra minutes, that's going to benefit them when they get to conference play and those key pieces come back. It's like the philosophy of everything is an opportunity. Talk about a learning experience opportunity to get experience on the floor in the absence of players that are injured. The focus is just to continue to build to get better so that they are ready come conference time. Training staff taking a look at Courtney Moore. Leading three-point shooter last season for ETSU, one of their starters. Johnson saw the opportunity. Victoria Saxton doing <laughs> Victoria Saxton things. I'm telling you, she came back another season to prepare skill for the WNBA. That skill right there is about all you need. And look, I can teach you to shoot the ball. I can create offensive opportunities, but it is hard to teach somebody to have the hunger to rebound like Victoria Saxton does. What did she tell us? It's in her heart. It is. It's just, it's, it's in her bloodstream. It's in her DNA to rebound. Second foul called on Ella Boyle. Saxton taking it, and she's fouled by Vananda. When you look at this lineup that South Carolina has on the floor, you've got Victoria Saxton, Leticia, me here, 
and Aaliyah Boss, and any one of those three players could float out and play the three spot. So that'd be a mismatch nightmare. Say you're gonna put a post on Victoria Saxon. Saxon now can pull you out and play the three. Like spread the floor, make little strategy. South Carolina can play chess while everybody else is playing checkers. Have we seen Victoria Saxon at the three in past years? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. No, yeah. not at all. But we've seen a player like Leticia and me here. Remember last season when Destiny Henderson got hurt in that South in that Clemson game before South Carolina went down to the Bahamas, Ami here took over at the point guard spot. So imagine having Ami here at the point, Victoria Saxon at the three. You've got uh, Aaliyah Boston. You can put Camilla Cardoso out there. What big, how big a lineup would that be for South Carolina? It's like a redwood forest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Giselle Thomas, a little step around. She's had some good looks, just hasn't been able to finish. She'll kick it back out for the bank in, and Malia Kurtner will take it. Saxton gets her own rebound and then eventually gets herself to the free throw line. It's one of the areas that Don Siley talked to us about this morning, making layups. Yep. You gotta be able to finish through contact, especially when you have that size advantage. She said, we make layups, that will cause our field goal percentage to go up. Yeah, Victoria Saxton, I mean, she had senior day and everything and then just really thought about it over the summer. Do I want to come back and use my fifth year? Talked to Don Staley and decided, yes, I want to come work on myself. Well, Don also talked to WNBA coaches and GMs about Victoria Saxon and what she needed to work on and then delivered that information to Saxon and said, look, you can work on these things, raise your stock and potential to make a roster in the league. Sarah Thomas with the shot clock winding down. Excuse me, Thompson. And that's a travel. All right, sit down, Peck. Ashlyn Watkins is back in the game. Okay, I know you're excited. Look, I am thrilled because look at this lineup. Leticia and me here is playing the one. You still got Bree Bill on the floor. Look, you can have four post players. Traditional, they're not post players. Aaliyah Boston said they're, we're big guards. They're big guards, yeah. right? <laughs> they're gonna wave off the basket. It's gonna be ETSU ball. It's a foul on Bree Beal. I mean, look, the average height on the floor right now has got to be about 6'3". And all of the players on the floor, they can move. They're not afraid to defend away from the basket. Look at Saxton out on the perimeter. McDaniel will try her hand. Too much to shoot around Leticia Me here, who has the longest wingspan on South Carolina's team. We count that as a pass to Boston. Okay, but let me go back. <laughs> Ashlyn Watkins rebounded it and rebounded and brought it down the floor. All of these big players too have handles. McDaniel, South Carolina trying out this big lineup. It's working defensively. Here goes Saxton. The kick to Bree Beal in the corner. And Saxton lost it. I was going to ask, are there any downsides to the big lineup? But you can see how well they can move. 
Yeah, the, you know, the biggest question I would have is, you know, when you go with a big lineup, who's going to handle the basketball, and will you defend away from the basket? They've answered both those questions, and I think yes. Giselle Thomas in trouble. Seven seconds before the half. Leticia Me here gives it up to Watkins, and she's able to finish. A dominating first half for the number one team in the nation. They end on a 15-3 run. Gamecocks looking so good. All pieces helping out South Carolina tonight. Make sure you stick around. After the break, we'll take you back to the pregame national championship ring ceremony. Opening night in Columbia, South Carolina, and the reigning national champions, the South Carolina Gamecocks, up big at 55 to 12 over ETSU. And guess what? We got to see some young talent in, Ash in action. Ashlyn Watkins. Well, Ashlyn Watkins brought some action, getting on the glass. The freshman running the floor adding to the depth of South Carolina. And we've been waiting to see Raven Johnson took over at that point guard spot. She demonstrated, hey, you can't leave her open. She can knock down shots. But look at these quick hands, anticipation, running in transition. Dr. Staley refers to her, Raven Johnson, as being fearless. And she demonstrated exactly that in that first half. Yeah, we got to see Raven Johnson along with Kiera Fletcher running the point guard position for South Carolina. Remember, that's the position they don't return. Destiny Henderson on to the WNBA, and you can already see how good these two are going to be. Well, because you have to look at, if you're Coach Daly, you're looking at, okay, what I have this year, and that number one recruiting class are all seniors. They're leaving. What do I have to build on? Well, the cupboard is definitely not going to be left bare. They have a lot of talent to develop this season to really to carry things on. I think one of the most interesting things, too, is we saw that big lineup for South Carolina. Wow. They all can defend away from the basket. They're comfortable handling the basketball. Because I think when you see that big lineup, you're going to expect teams to bring some full court pressure. So can they handle the basketball? ETSU will send it up the floor. This is Jayla Rufus-Milner over to McDaniel. Look, we never saw the hustle and the fight leave this ETSU team. They were getting a lot of looks in the paint. The problem is you get up against South Carolina in the paint, who's got a ton of height. That's the thing, but they still didn't get out of system. They stayed within their system. They're running this four out motion offense. The spacing is still really good. And you talk about going against the length of South Carolina, yeah, that's tough, but the cuts are still hard. You don't see a discouragement from ETSU. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Giselle Thomas. Great look. That's one you got to finish. Raven gives it up to Victoria Saxton, and she'll go to the free throw line. You know, we talked about the importance of Saxton coming back for that fifth year on the floor. The leadership piece, we didn't mention. She has been a captain for four years now. Well, she's like the grandma in the in the locker room. <laughs> you know, she's she just, was the mom. Yeah, she's just got a nurturing soul. She wants to make sure everybody's okay, make sure everybody understands the plan. She holds everybody accountable in a standard that is set by Don Staley. It's been just been the consummate leadership that Victoria Saxon has brought in the locker room for South Carolina. I'll never forget the emotion that we saw on Aaliyah Boston's oh. face on senior day when they honored Victoria Saxton. You saw what she did last season, and there's so much that doesn't show up on a stat sheet that Victoria does. But, I mean, Boston was in tears before senior day because they are so close. and. 
Victoria means so much to her. Well, Victoria demonstrates not only is she a, a vocal leader, but also just how hard she works. She's not a player that offenses are run for, right? But she still continues to bring it on the court every second that she's on the floor. Zaya Cook whistled for the foul. Victoria Saxton, a captain, along with Aaliyah Boston, the other captain for South Carolina this season. When it comes to ETS, you can see the culture that Brenda Mock has built. You saw a player go down. The other four rush over to her to help her get up. You saw at the end of drills and shoot around, high-fiving. You gotta touch somebody after every drill. And it's not superficial. You can see the sincerity in it as well. As you said, that's been one of the most challenging pieces having taken over this program on August 8th was just the culture piece of it. Three seconds here for ETSU. Thompson loses it. Raven Johnson just says, give me the basketball up to Cook. There's the vision. Raven Johnson is just like the Hamburglar. You just watch her. You leave that basketball out there. She's going to take it from you. You watch how she keeps her eye on the basketball. She is looking for an opportunity to poke that thing away. Look at her right there getting on it defensively. You like that Hamburglar. I loved it. <laughs> Mid-season form, Peck. Cook in the corner. In flies, Bree Beal. I often talk to Don Staley about Bree Beal, and she talks about, she just loves it. This is a player that was a, that was a scoring player coming out of Ohio, but had to take on the role of being a defender. Talk about defense, you got Raven Johnson, but Bree Beal brings a bully ball. She brings that action. She's gonna go crash the glass and finish. Do the dirty work, Bree Beal. Jackie Alexander, one of the assistants for ETSU, you see her there in the middle. She is an incredible story. Started her basketball career at West Point before continuing on to other adventures, but the military in her heart actually was a captain in the Army, served in Iraq in 2016, was a part of the battalion at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. She was deployed for nine months in 2016 and has learned so much from the military that she's taken into her coaching career. Well, and she said that was one of the things that she liked about with Coach Box is just really bringing out the leadership aspect of the players both on and off the court. And she took a little bit from her experience from the military and they were able to bridge that together as they continue to help these young women that they're coaching to develop. Yeah, Veterans Day coming up on Friday, and we especially thank Coach Alexander for her service. Three seconds on the shot clock. Giselle Thomas throws one up. So you know, she was talking to Giselle Thomas, who is 23 years old. She said, I was over in Iraq when That's I was your age. 23, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Well, we've seen a little bit of everything for South Carolina tonight. Their new point guards, their new freshmen, how good they can be still rebounding the basketball. But again, I, I think that if we saw South Carolina and how good they were defensively last season, they have not missed a step really this season. They're, that's where their point of emphasis is defensively. And we've talked about their length. And a lot of times when, you, when you're a team of length, you can be lazy and just rely on blocking shots. But you watch how the length of South Carolina, they get out, they're up in passing lanes. They've been able to bring jump switches on ball screens. The rotations have been there. Here goes Raven Johnson moving the basketball. She'll pull up at the free throw line. Stop and pop. Her all around game. Wow. Again, remember, she's reco uh, re recovered from an ACL. That's why she has that knee brace on there. But it hadn't slowed down her game. 
like the defensive block, and then South Carolina is off and running. This is a good decision by Raven Johnson. When you get inside the free throw line area, you better have already made your mind up of what you're doing because if you get in there and try to figure it out, it's too late. She knew when she got inside, she was open. She was the best option to pull the trigger. I was going to ask you, how do you like her decision-making tonight on whether to shoot the basketball or give it to her teammate? I like it a lot. Yeah. I, I think she's made terrific decisions. She has not been sped up. She's played with good composure. Uh, I, I've liked her three-point shot. ETSU is backing off, daring you to take the shot. She knows she's a good three-point shooter. No hesitation there. Knocking down that shot from the perimeter. Boston's got eight points, nine rebounds. She had a, a few double-doubles last year. I don't know if you know Coach Peck. Well, uh, what they told me, she had 30. Yeah. Had a streak well, of heard. 27 yeah. in a row. Heard it was an SEC record. <laughs> Say less. Coach Mock's going to call timeout. We'll step aside. Third quarter of the season opener for South Carolina and ETSU here in Columbia. Actually, we'll stay here. You know, we've been talking about the freshman, Ashlyn Watkins, and we've seen what she can do. Um, we got a pretty piece of footage for you coach because it, it was incredible before she even got to South Carolina. The girls got moves. Uh oh, she was in the power aid dunk contest. I mean, just with ease getting up over the rim and getting the finish. Three women have won this dunk contest. You've got Candace Parker that played at Tennessee, Fran Bolivi that played Plays at Stanford now. Yeah. And now Ashlyn Watkins that's here at South Carolina. And look at where she touches. 10-9.5. That's higher than anybody on South Carolina's basketball team. Yeah, all three of these categories, she leads South Carolina. And look, you got to realize, too, she's coming in as a true freshman. She hasn't had a season in a college weight room yet, an off season in the college weight room. And she's already able to do these things. You deadlift 400 pounds in the hotel gym this morning? <laughs> a bacon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you just look at and how light, how strong she is, but she's light off her feet. She's a quick jumper. Yeah, Don Staley had a lot of positive things to say about her new freshman. Ashlyn is, I mean, incredible athlete. Like she's super smart. Like she doesn't. She doesn't move like a freshman. She could, she could probably communicate a little bit more, but that will come. You can push her. She's very, very coachable, um, just highly intel intelligent, and she's got a really good feel for the game. Like, I, I just think that sky is the limit for her. Like, And she's getting the chance to play with Aaliyah Boston, with Victoria Saxton. Like, that's got to factor in, too, to her development. Well. With how she plays vertically, and you're going against the length that's already at South Carolina. So now she's, as as Dawn said, you know, she's got she's got terrific instinct, and she is coachable. So what she's going to learn in this season, playing with other players that are her size, just makes her, you know, even more dangerous for any opponent that South Carolina is going to play. I mean, we've seen she got great touch. She had that jumper, that face-up shot. She's got terrific timing, that offensive rebound, offensive putback. We've seen her sky up around the rim, rebounding on the defensive end, and jumping out and defending ball screen. She's okay. She's not tentative. She's not afraid to get out and get aggressive defensively. South Carolina goes with their starters minus Raven Johnson. It's Kiera Fletcher in there running the point. Eight seconds for ETSU. Can they execute out of this timeout? Thompson. 
too much on it. Up ahead to Zaya Cook, South Carolina pushing in transition. They love to do it. 13 points for Cook. As soon as South Carolina a shot goes up, South Carolina's got the confidence of who's going to get the rebound. You see the other four players, they are often heading the other direction. 25 fast break points for South Carolina tonight. See, ETSU really gone with a small lineup. Doesn't matter. Look, Aaliyah Boston defending out away from the basket. Rufus Milner at the elbow. Fletcher in the corner. Victoria Saxton on cleanup duty. We watch as soon as Bree Bill got possession of the basketball, Zaya Cook, Victoria Saxton, Aaliyah Boston all head down and headed hard the other direction. Saxton gets them both. South Carolina came out dominant in this one. Started with 29 points in the first quarter. They ended that quarter on a 24 to one run. And they have gone deep to their bench. Two players in double figures, Zaya Cook with 13, Saxton with 11. A lot of players getting experience together. You know, they play Maryland on Friday. So that's gonna be an interesting matchup. Maryland has had uh, kind of a, ros a roster reshuffle, but they've got a great player in Diamond Miller that South Carolina's going to have to scheme for. <laughs> Zaya Cook was fouled on the shot by Paris McCarthy. But I like that shot by Zaya Cook was when she caught it, she lined herself up. McCarthy just turning to box out a little too soon. Got to let the shooter come down. Again, Giselle Thomas, she's just driving the basket over and over. She has not backed down. She has the ability, Thomas has the ability to find seams and get inside the defense. You know, one of the things that drew her to ETSU was that Joe Silvestri was with her at FIU. So she already had some familiarity with him and she committed to ETSU before Coach Mock took over as the new head coach. Yeah, and then she said when she met Coach Mock, she knew she, she was in the right place. And I said before, she said Mock is her favorite coach that she has had. She went from High Point to FIU to Temple. Aaliyah Boston underneath the ball movement for South Carolina open things up. Eleven points, ten rebounds for Aaliyah Boston. She's got that double double. Sixty one now in her career. The willingness to pass of South Carolina, and you can tell the familiarity. They know before they catch the ball where the next pass is going to go. They're just in sync, and a lot of that has to do with experience. Yeah. 
It's so funny to think that four years ago, these seniors were the number one recruiting class coming in. They were on pace to be the number one team going into the NCAA tournament before COVID canceled everything. And that's how good they were then. And now we kept thinking like, wait till senior year. Well, here we are, here I we know. go. <laughs> But do you remember their freshman year? And Don Staley talked about how competitive that freshman class was coming in. And they have not let up throughout their career here at South Carolina. Journey McDaniel off. And Aaliyah Boston sends it up to Raven Johnson. Look at her find Camila Cardoso. She set that the whole thing up off the bounce. She knew if she made the defense take a bite with that little jab and then crossover, Cardoso was going to be open. Four assists for Raven Johnson, two rebounds, seven points. Check out Raven Johnson as she comes down. Little hard dribble to the right, then back to the left. Pull the defense away just enough for great timing, getting the ball inside to Cardoso. And talking to Raven Johnson before the game, you could see she was all smiles. She had, you know, the eyelashes on point, the lip gloss. I said, well, are you nervous? <laughs> she said, no, not one bit. She said, I'm excited. She's been waiting, biting at the bit to get back on the floor. Cooper almost pokes it away from Thomas. Thomas is going to be a handful to keep up in the SOCON. Cardoso was out of bounds when she caught that ball. Yeah, she felt like, too, you know, this team with ETSU being having so many new players. We asked her, what did you think? that you guys are going to do in the SOCON. She said, I think we're going to surprise some people. Yeah, I think sixth is low. Oh, in the corner, that's Aaliyah Vananda. Because the Buccaneers, they've got scores, they've got shooters, they've got post players that will match up with the size of their conference. They won't face night in and night out the length of a South Carolina. Well, here's a look at Saturday's SEC Network college football lineup. Will Levis and Kentucky host Vanderbilt at noon Eastern. Then South Carolina in the Swamp, fresh off a win over Van Aden to face the Gators at 4 Eastern. And our SEC Saturday night matchup, looking for bowl eligibility. Texas A&M taking on Auburn. All three games also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Oh, the steal, the score, Raven Johnson! Telling you, she keeps her eye on the basketball, looking for that opportunity to poke it away. That's four steals now for Johnson. Bucket falls for Journey McDaniel. on the floor for it. Hey, coming up, Destiny Henderson 
In the WNBA now, she's going to join us in the fourth quarter. She was the point guard of last year's national championship team. She'll be over at the table, so make sure you come back for that. Destiny Henderson had a pretty good rookie, rookie year with the Indiana Fever. She got into the starting lineup early. Yeah, played in every game. Interesting. It'll, I'll be interested to hear her perspective on this year's team that she's after watching South Carolina through these three quarters. All about the South Carolina Gamecocks tonight in Columbia. The number one team in the nation looking like it. They've already put up 80 points in this game, and we still have 10 minutes to play here in Colonial Life. Well, last year on the road to the national championship for South Carolina, it was Destiny Henderson running the point for these South Carolina Gamecocks. And we saw Henny could do it all. Oh, Henny brought the noise. She was the most outstanding player, remember, in the Greensboro Regional. And then nothing was going to deny Destiny Henderson from getting that national championship in Minneapolis. And we are so excited that she is joining us now. Henny, welcome back. What has it been like to come back, see that banner up in the rafters? I mean, it's been great. Um, since the moment I got here, like, I've just been so anxious. I got here um, 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, and, you know, my teammates let me in, and I got to see them. Came for shoot around, you know, all of them, their, their faces were lit. Um, it was just, you know, a, a really great moment because I haven't seen them in months. Well, when you're looking at this team this year, Henny, after coming up, winning a national championship, I want to hear your evaluation of what you've seen so far from this year's team. Um, I mean, great. Nothing it's, it's actually what I expected, but to come and, you know, see the freshmen get in and, um, you know, do their thing, it's, it's amazing, man, because, they you know, they have really great potential. How you feeling about turning the reins over to Raven Johnson? Take it. <laughs> <laughs> Take it. She's been great on defense. You know, she got, like, five steals right now. She's, you know, Oh, you up there keeping stats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm she got to size them up. <laughs> what was your favorite thing about last year's team and the run that you guys made? Um, I feel like the turning point when, you know, when we lost the SEC championship game, I feel like we needed that, um, you know, because it just really prepared us, you know, for the Final Four and like, what it what it would take, you know, to um, be the winning team and, you know, to come out on top. So I feel like, you know, those losses really humbled us, um, you know, allowed us to be more, more physical and, you know, more hungrier. Yeah. We got to see you get your ring before this game. Now, you didn't bring it over here, but what was that moment like? And when you opened it up, what would you think? Um, I mean, I haven't, you know, the turnaround was so quick. You know, I didn't get to celebrate really with the team afterwards and, you know, the parade and everything of, of that nature. So to come back here and, and to have this moment with them is really great because, you know, it's something that I'm going to be able to take back with me, you know, have a memory, you know, some type of closure of the season that we had. So. Now, is this going to be a ring you're going to wear around? I mean, I know you yeah. like the jewelry. No, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm definitely going to put it on my necklace. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know if you, your neck will be <laughs> strong enough yeah. to hold yeah. that. <laughs> I've been in the weight room, so we you good. Yeah. <laughs> well, you just finished your rookie season with the Indiana Fever. What was that experience like? It was a great experience, um, you know, coming in just to be – um, as focused as I was to come in, you know, try to hit shots, try to learn as much as I can from a point guard perspective. And, you know, it's much faster. So to come in, you know, off the bench, be ready to play, you know, stuff like that um, mentally is, is really important for the game, you know, to come off the bench. And then as um, far as, um, you know, with my teammates, I feel like I've gelled um, a lot with them, you know, in the time being that we had together. Um, it's been really great. You know, we all, we're all cool. We're all friends and, you know, we, we get along with each other, so it's good. Courtney, when Destiny was here in South Carolina, I wasn't sure she could talk. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be chatting a little bit. You are yeah. chatting up. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. <laughs> was there an area that you've realized now that you've gotten to the WNBA that Dawn has helped you the most or set you up the most for success on the next level? Yes, um, definitely. When I was a freshman, you know, I had – people that was starting over me you know she always used to tell me like 
you're you're a person that could come in, you know, and be a starter. You know what I'm saying? So she let me know stuff like that. And because, you know, she had those conversations with me, allowed me to be more comfortable with my role. Um, and, you know, as far as taking into the league, you know, I'm in the same position. You know, I'm a freshman all over again, have people starting up, you know, ahead of me. Um, and, you know, she just... Okay, good still. <laughs> That's one of your freshmen. <laughs> yeah, I see. Ashley Watkins. But no, she, she really just prepared me for the moment, though. Well, we've heard a lot of good things about Sonia Fagan, too, and what she's taken a big jump. Yes. She scored that bucket. Yes, I heard she really stepped it up since last year. Well, they've said every player has improved since yep. last year. Yes. And I'm really excited to see them play. Now you got in at 3 o'clock in the morning. Where, where were you coming from? Are you playing overseas? Um, no, so I'm not playing overseas. I was um, visiting. I was out in Arizona. Okay. So I literally left straight from there to come here. And, I, you know, I have a marketing agreement with Indiana Fever. So, you know, I go in and out um, every month, you know, to train and, you know, to do. Okay. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, I, I stay busy. How did you stay motivated, Dusty? Because you, know, you wanted to go be drafted in the first round. They don't yeah. take you to the second round. There was a lot of chatter mm -hmm. about that. But I thought you landed in the best place right. because it was a roster that you were going to make. Yeah. Um, I, it's a blessing in disguise. You know, you can't – everything isn't going to be perfect. Everything isn't going to be what you expected. And, you know, people going to talk and people going to say things. But, you know, the turnaround, it happened for a reason. You know, and I'm, I'm really blessed for the opportunity that I had because, you know, I feel like um, if I was any other position or any other team, I feel like, ooh. I just feel like, you know, it, it happened for a reason, for sure. Now, Christy Sides was just named yeah. the head coach. Have you had a chance to talk with her yet? Yes, I actually just um, was on the phone with her a few days ago um, before I came here. Um, you know, I'm really excited to meet her, so I'll actually meet her this week. She sounds really cool, though. That's awesome. So what is the focus for you in the offseason with your game? Um, Really, I feel like for me, defensively, I feel like I want to, you know, get better, you know, footwork and, you know, making sure I, I stay with defenders and um, just, just lock in on defense from an offense perspective. I feel like um, I'm a really good shooter, so just continue, you know, to shoot the ball really well, but, you know, also to push tempo, you know, when knowing when to slow down, um, you know, and set my team up, teammates up, you know, to score the ball. We're going to have the lottery on ESPN on Friday. There are going to be a lot of these women that will be waiting for their names yes. to be called in the spring. What advice would you give to college players that they need to be preparing themselves for yes. when they make that step? to the WNBA? Um, honestly, just to keep an open mind, you know, to be a sponge, you know, once you get to the WNBA, just to, um, you know, take it all in, um, learn as much as you can. I feel like... Um, oh, woo! nasty! <laughs> Dang! <laughs> oh! I'm going to let you be a commentator LA. on this block right here. Yeah, Do take it. us through yeah, it, Yeah, man, keep, keep it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, let's see it. What'd you uh, see? That's all ball. <laughs> That's all ball. You know, you can't, you can't stop that. Look, another oh, one. Oh, wow. Duck There's it. Watkins. Duck no. it. Look, the bench wanted no. her to. She can. She can, easily. Oh, and with ease, yeah. She, easy. Ashlyn dunks like it's a layup. Oh, Henny, we've heard Dawn say Aaliyah Boston is WNBA ready. After playing in the league, you think so? Aaliyah Boston, WNBA ready? Yes, I definitely think she is. Um, she's a phenomenal player. She can play inside, outside, shoot the ball. Very physical, strong, athletic. She's going to be good. Yeah, she got herself a double-double tonight already. Yes. Okay. Indiana it, has a lottery pick. Ooh. What would it be like for the Indiana to be in the position to draft Aaliyah Boston and you all be teammates again? Man, I feel like that would be one of the best feelings I had in a long time. <laughs> Honestly, uh, the chemistry that we have on the court, you know, to translate that into the league, that would be great. Well, you're going to have to bring your rabbit's foot out. And, yes. You know, yeah, your $2 lucky. bill, all the lucky <laughs> things for to see how those balls drop on Friday. Hopefully it'll work out. We're going to see. Good pass, L.A. 
Inside to Camilla point Cardoso. Guard yeah. <laughs> like she had to take over the point yeah. guard spot when you yeah. got hurt last season. Yeah, I remember that. She held it down, too. Did you see the big lineup, too, that they had out there right at the end of the second yes. quarter? Impressive. Shout out. What have you liked most about what you've seen from your Gamecocks tonight? Um, honestly, the freshmen. Yeah. You know, just the because you know I've seen a lot of them play already, so I feel like coming in, seeing the bench play more. Um, you know, it's really exciting. You know, because you know they're the future. You know, they're gonna be trying to hold hold the team in the next few years. So, look, look, look. <laughs> <laughs> She picked up the player and the ball as the Watkins <laughs> did. Deadlift 400 pounds. Weight room. Yeah. She's been there a few times. Yeah, we've seen the depth that South Carolina can have this season. They've rotated pretty much everybody in. Yeah. Everybody's up in the passing lanes. They trying to get yeah. those breakaways. They trying to. No quit on the defense. They got to show us a dunk or something. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look. Ah, she would have got that one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it would have been wraps. I feel like these headphones probably would have came off my head. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here's L.A. Ooh. The behind the back. Ooh. Dumping it off to Fagan underneath. Point God, L.A. Bench loving it too. Hands off. There you go. South Carolina thrived in the fast break point area. 35 fast break points in this game tonight. And that'll be a turnover. Destiny Henderson, it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much for joining us. Enjoy that ring it. over there. <laughs> Check out this transition. Look at LA go. What do you see? What do you like? The behind the pack dime dropper. <laughs> Four minutes, eight seconds to go. South Carolina on top of ETSU in their opener, 95 to 28. That defense, it's still there. The fast break points, 35 of them tonight. Well, the aggressiveness, the deflections, the blocking the shots, the way everyone was willing to defend away from the basket, and a lot of times the defense for South Carolina, what does that do? The transition to the offensive end, off and running. I believe that's going to be the calling card for the South Carolina Gamecocks this season. Yeah, and it's been everybody getting in on the defense. I've been really impressed with Raven Johnson's defense. Well, when the defense starts, you at the point guard position that you're really causing, wreaking havoc on the ball handler to start the defense, that really flows through, becomes contagious all the way down the floor, and then they're off and running. Look, they've already forced 21 turnovers. Turn that into 28 points. And it has been impressive. They look like the number one team in the nation. Okay, you see Ra Raven Johnson there? That's Breezy, Breezy Hall sitting there with the mask that isn't even able to play yet. She has been ill and really working her way back. That's another defender That's that true. South Carolina is going to have. And Don Sally talks about how exciting Breezy is on both the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Yeah, she's the only player that's been unavailable for South Carolina tonight, but they will have her back very soon. Crashing the glass, also still a focus. That was the 50th rebound for South Carolina compared to 25 for ETSU. Offensive foul on Sonia Fagan. I want to go back too, to what Dawn Staley talked to us about, and she said it a couple of times, the three things she's watching this season, field goal percentage, assist per game, and their three-point percentage. That's going to be kind of a focus and a measuring stick for their success this year. Well, and I think that three-point shooting, it's really, it's really hard 
in because the question of should I shoot it or do I get the ball inside when you've got so much length inside. Right. And I think Raven Johnson's going to help with the three-point shot. I think Olivia Thompson's going to get some play. Kiara Fletcher, she can shoot the ball. And I think that Zaya Cook is going to have a much better shooting season this year. Yeah, I think Zaya Cook's really challenged herself. She's also worked on the mental aspect of her game of, you know, letting plays move on by that don't work out in her favor. And she's an elite scorer. Look, she's a highlight waiting to happen. Oh, yeah. And it's usually the bigger the game, the bigger the moment is when you see those big plays from Zaya Cook. Three minutes to go. Cooper going coast to coast, but she gets herself to the free throw line. Fourth foul on Ella Boyle. Coming up, we're going to have the next Thinking Out Loud with Spencer Hall and Richard Johnson. They'll break down the weekend on the gridiron, talk about the hottest topics in the coming week, and preview Saturday's biggest games. It's right here on SEC Network and the ESPN app. You can't let me think out loud. I would love, well, I, first of all, I'm around you a lot, so I hear you and think you hear out me loud. thinking out loud. <laughs> that show's on late, Peck, though. You could go on that show. Well, look, I'm thinking out loud about ETSU, and I think Box got to be happy with what she has seen from her team. Going against the length and talent of South Carolina, they have competed. They've not folded their tent. It's been 40, fight for 40 minutes. So I think that the competitiveness, I think the culture is being built a great foundation for ETSU. And I, I do, I think that in the SOCON, six is very low to pick this team. I mean, you still got players that are out and more that got hurt during this game has been a player that she's really looked at getting great production from. She's been able to go 10 deep, getting a lot of experience on the court today. Yeah, ETSU with four players out today, and then Courtney Moore got banged up in the first half and had to leave the game. Zaniah Fagan battling strong. I mean, it's like you, as an offensive player, you get away from one great presence of length of South Carolina, you run right into another one. Six seconds on the shot clock. Kurtner's shot is off. This is Watkins. Wow. Handling the, the basketball. The handles. That's what I'm trying to tell you Spicy. She's special. Just effortless, too. Well, Ashlyn's got to run. She took a play off there. She didn't. She's tired. Paris McCarthy. One minute to go. not a bad start for the reigning national champion. The way that the Gamecocks came out and played today, contributions from everybody, the focus on the defensive end was in your first game out, how you want to look. I think South Carolina looked pretty good. Safe to say you're most excited about Ashlyn Watkins. Uh, Ashlyn Watkins and Raven, Raven Johnson. Johnson. Yes. Absolutely. Here goes L.A. <laughs> oh, 
Over 100 points for South Carolina. And the number one team in the nation is going to start out 1-0. and Six players in double figures tonight for South Carolina as they start their road to repeat. Dominant in the glass, dominant defensively, and got a lot of depth contribution. We're going to get to the studio. Don't go anywhere. We will speak to South Carolina head coach Don Staley in just a moment. But for now, let's get you back to Dari in the studio. South Carolina victorious in their opener tonight.